Hi, hey, and all those other greetings of adventurers. I'm Jake Spins, welcoming you guys back to my gaming and unboxing channel, where today we have another exciting unboxing for you guys. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. Originally, what I was going to do is I was going to take that good old Bowser plush over there. I was going to, like, walk over with him and, you know, just pretend I'm holding a Bowser, and then I'd be like, oh, no! I dropped the Bowser, and then it was going to fall into, like, a a lava bucket, you know? And uh, I could do, you know, like, a, like an endless staircase gambit where I'm just, like, you know, walking up the stairs. Just, just pretend this is good editing, you know? Just pretend this is funny, and, I'm, you know, I'm walking up the endless staircase. But the reason why I'm not doing that is two reasons, actually. One, I realized that I kind of piled a bunch of... Pikmin onto Bowser, Whoa! and uh, it would be extremely annoying to move Bowser at all. And two, I'm actually in the process of building a Mario Kart home circuit track. That's right, this is a construction zone, stop what you're doing, put on your hard hats. I don't need one because my, my hair also counts as hard hat because it's so thick that if something falls on it, it doesn't hurt. Villagers bowling ball? No. Doesn't hurt. Not at all. But anyway, though, guys, you might be wondering, so if you're building a track, why are you doing an unboxing video? Well, for those who don't know, I actually stash all of my unboxing stuff under my art desk. So I figured I would try to get rid of one of the biggest boxes under there so that I can try to at least get some more organization and some space under there and it just so happens that that is the plush that we are doing right now which is bum bum blum. <laughs> wow he's so evil he just took out sonic everybody said you know if there was a mario sonic crossover that sonic would just cream bowser but apparently that's not that's not true I'm so sorry, Sonic. I, I didn't know, and, you know, I figured you'd be able to spin dash through a couple of bones, but apparently not. It makes you wonder how uh, how Mario versus Eggman would be, because you'd, you'd think Eggman would, would win. But, um, no, maybe, maybe Mario would just be really good. I mean, he can punch through bricks. Maybe he can just punch through metal. Let's not think about where that fist would go. Alrighty, but we have a dry Bowser. This is a character that I am very excited for. Originally, he was introduced, I believe, in the 2007 game. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll put it on the thing, but this is from childhood, so I, th I think it's 2007. If I'm wrong, maybe 2008, give or take. But um, introduced in New Super Mario Brothers. That's right, Nintendo decided, hmm, we need a little bit of nostalgia to sprinkle on, get us some sales. And uh, the way they did that was reinventing the wheel by making New Super Mar Mario Brothers. And then they did it again. And again. And again. And then ported the last again. <laughs> so there are five different titles that look almost the same. But, when this first came out, the DS one is actually pretty good, and it's actually fairly different from the Wii version, having different things like the Mini Mushroom and introducing the Mega Mushroom, which really isn't an introduction because we've seen Mario grow giant many, many times, including in Mario Party, you know, like Mario Party 4. And if Mario Party DS came before, which I'm not sure if it did, because they were both on the DS, might have came after, but then why wouldn't they have used the Mega Mushroom there? It's, it's weird. It's weird. But anyway, though, in this game series, one of the very first things you do is you hit that nostalgia button, you go, and I mean, at this point, you probably know what it is, but, like, 
you jump over the axe, you hit the axe, but instead of Bowser being like, haha, I'm immune to lava because I'm a turtle. Instead he goes, no, I'm a turtle. I'm in lava, help me. And he becomes this, thanks to Magikoopa. Weirdly enough though, Bowser Jr. never goes through this process. But there is a bootleg plush of him. Yeah, so that's the uh, second interesting fact about this entire thing. If you didn't know, there's actually a bootlegged dry Bowser that some people think looks better than this, and in some cases, originally, I thought that it kind of did, but having this guy in my hands makes me kind of think otherwise. It does make me think, though, maybe I'll get that dry Bowser Jr. even though it's bootleg. You shouldn't support bootlegs, I know, but like, it's a character that would never happen, so it's it's weird because it's like, it is a bootleg, but it's also like, no, it's not official, like, it could never be official. So I don't know, you see where I'm going with this? Kind of like the baby Waluigi thing? But, ah, eh, whatever. Either way, though, let's get into the, uh, the flesh. And, uh, you know, after the... <clears throat> After the new Super Mario Brothers series, they went pretty ham with this guy. They put him in Mario Kart Wii, and he was a super cool character there. Don't know if I unlocked him, just like I don't know if I unlocked Bowser Jr., because I don't think I got him in Wii. I need to still do that, especially since I'm going to be planning on doing some kind of a marathon, and I love Mario Kart. It makes me a fake fan if I don't have everything in Mario Kart Wii other than me costumes, right? And of course... Um, in Mario Kart 8, they skipped on Dry Bowser to put him as DLC. Which was included with, uh, Deluxe, so that was pretty cool. Sorry about the weird random cut, guys. There was, uh, somebody outside using a saw. And I thought it was gonna go away, and it didn't. So I paused it, and then I, I restarted the video. And then it, it happens again, so then I had to pause it. But we're, we're back. We're back. I had to save him from, from the bone saw because I didn't want him to get sawed. But anyway, though, guys, we're back. And here is a dry Bowser who is uh, actually fairly soft, you know, and you might be like, well, spins. It's a plush. Wouldn't you expect him to be soft? And well, yeah, that's true. You would expect that. It's also one of those things, too, where it's supposed to be made of, like, bones and stuff. So even though, you know, it's a plush, you wouldn't be expecting that. I wasn't expecting it to be super soft. And that being said, his softness is also not extremely super soft. Like, it, it is soft. It's, it's a Nintendo plushie, so of course it's soft. So for his shell, you've got the whole, like, black part. And this is actually a rougher felt than the outer portion. So this part, which is actually still a, uh, a bright white, unlike the, uh, the bone, which is more of like a, like a cream color, and you can see that on Spike too, you know, the, uh, so the black part is actually like a rougher felt. The spikes themselves is also, it's, it's a more rough felt because, I mean, they're burned spikes, so that's kind of what you'd expect, and they're also like imbued with lava in the cracks. So I'm wondering if like Magikoopa's magic just like, that's how he kept the uh, the shell together, you know? Is that he infused the lava and still still a little, little burn and bright, you know, it's not hard, but like that liquid, it's like liquid gl glue. I guess Mario lava is supposed to be glue then? I guess weird continuity that nobody expected. Yeah, it's just gluing the shell together. Um, how it how it still has the rim? I don't know. I don't know, but it has the it's going in here. And the red is um actually felt as well. I kind of expected that to be a kind of like shiny type of texture because it, it looks kind of shiny. Like not not incredibly shiny, but it looked like it would be like in that indent fairly shiny. But I feel like for um, for the texture, this was probably their best way of doing it for the felt. So you know that makes sense. But it's also you know it's also a forty dollar plush that I got from Amazon actually. 
But um, anyway, though, going a little lower than shell, we have the tail. Usually start from up, but I guess we're starting from down. And the tail is actually incredibly soft, where you also have these spikes, which are also super soft, and they're, they're a flat felt. Which is kind of interesting, because I, I guess it makes sense, since the spike is a flatter spike, instead of being like this round spike. So it allows them to do that, and it also just makes it easier. The problem with this, though, is it does also make for a piece of the plush that can very easily be damaged. So that's going to be something that I need to keep in mind and be very, very careful of. While we're on the tail, I do also want to mention um, the bone groove right here, which is actually a very thick embroidered type of wrapping. It almost looks like they took a very rough ribbon and they kind of just wrapped it around. Now I can tell that it's embroidering now, at least, yeah. So it, lo it looks like very thick embroidering instead, because if it was a ribbon, I feel like you'd be able to tell. So that's some pretty good detail. Of course, under the shell, you also have another one of these marks, and you have some more marks on like the bottom of the feet, which you also have the toes. And for the toes, it actually, is such a thin rim that it comes off of the plush and you can actually feel it which is really weird it's like an actual like toe bone and it's kind of it's kind of kind of shivery <laughs> you know makes me feel really weird especially for the pinky toe because like this one this one toe is just really tiny so it's like really really elaborated also, it's like super curved. Does he have that on the other foot? No, he doesn't. Dude, this foot, his toes are bigger. Look at this. Look at his toes. <laughs> like they're, they're actually like this foot's stuffed a lot better with the toes. You know, they're thicker. You can hardly feel the, the rims on these ones actually. But then this one, for some reason, the foot is not stuffed as well. And it feels a little less sturdy. So I guess on his left side, he just uh, he just has a worse foot. But that does also make him more unique, and uh, you know it shows it does show more love. So I guess that's uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, you know now that we're done talking about his backside and his and his feet, I guess let's talk about his uh, his face a little bit. But before we can get to the face, we gotta talk about his sweet hairdo, which uh, is actually pretty cool. So, for Dry Bowser, his eyebrows burn off, alright? So that makes sense, you know? Has no hair there. But, like, he keeps this sweet rockin' mohawk here, and I don't know if it's magic, I don't know if it's fire stuff. It's a cool design choice, but it makes you question, like, how did he keep this hair but not, not this hair? You know? It's weird. And looking at Bowser, yeah, like the Bowser plush I have there, it's not its not the same hair. Like, it's more red. It's more of like a flame type of thing. But, like, they show it as hair instead of a flame. So that's kind of interesting. You know, does definitely make a question. But this is a pretty good, well-rounded design for this, too. You know, you've got the little spike here. You've got this here, this here, and then you have another back spike so it does have that very flame type feeling and it's actually very soft weirdly enough not as soft as his tail is though which is uh very interesting and then of course we have the uh the horns right here his his little devil horns because he's he's a devil he's devil he totally ride a motorcycle like heck yeah i'm part of a, a bike gang yeah Grr. Dude, dude, I want to see, I want to see uh, Dry Bowser with a biker tee, alright? I want to see that, because he, he would totally be that type of guy to be a biker. Like, he has that look on him. Anyway, though, going back to, uh, to the horns, you do also have these orange rims on here, so that also confirms, that is a part of Bowser's bone. If you didn't, if you didn't realize that, that is like the insert on there on his head 
which you think you think that would have like burned off because it's so thin. And it's actually another very frail, thin part of the plush, which makes me extremely nervous because that's definitely like the part that could be probably the most damaged. But there's another part that I do see on this plush that could also be damaged. So going to the uh, to the face part. And I think this is one of the parts that is super cool, but also where the bootleg kind of shines. So the thing is, it's super accurate though. Now the bootleg is extremely dark and it basically looks like that Bowser back there that I have, except just as dry Bowser. But if you actually look at the artwork, this is very close to it. Now the bone texture or the bone color could actually be more of a darker color. The uh, the red on the hair could be a little bit smaller because it is it is a bit fluffy, like that fire bush instead of you know like Bowser's actual hair kind of look. But it's fine, and I think that the eyes on this are actually they could have been wider, but for the most part he looks pretty good. Um, the pupils are correct. Those could have definitely been a little bigger though, but you have embroidered in there a red with a yellow dot in there and it's very small. And this is actually a rougher texture for those who are curious. I'm sure that the dot is as well, but that would be very, very tricky to, to feel that part just because it's so tiny. And then, uh, you know, so you got on both sides. This one looks a little farther on his face, though, than this one. So I guess that's uh, that's one point to his left side then, right? <laughs> one point away, one point two. And then going here, you know, his snout looks awesome. You know, the way they pose the jaw, having it open, like he's about to breathe his blue fire, just looks super, super cool. I think that's really awesome that they uh, that they did it this way. Going onto the uh, onto the mouth though, you do have these teeth. So this is actually a thin but very hard fabric. So I'm actually not very worried about how this fabric is and how his bones are. You know, he's definitely gone to the dentist despite the fact that these should be charred and completely gone. But he breathes fire, so you know it's it's whatever. It's whatever. So these are darker than his normal teeth would be though. And I don't know if they decided to do this because of the actual shadow, but they may have decided to do it for that reason. And of course they're on the top and on the bottom and they're actually so rough that they're, they're a little sharp on the tip. So it does actually feel like a tooth. So they did a really good job on that. Now on the right side, for some reason, um, yeah, his, his teeth are a bit crooked, so I guess the, this part he needs some surgery on because, uh, yeah, that's, that's unhealthy, dude. That's, that's super unhealthy. Unless that's what he looks like when he's smirking. <laughs> Is this how Dry Bowser shows emotion? Because I, I could see it. Um, going from there, though, you also have the inside of the mouth, which I totally understand why they did this part. This is also a super rough texture, kind of like what you would assume. There's no tongue in there. Um, but if you look at the artwork, it is a super hollowed out area. So that's what they were going for. They're going for that shadow. And I think the top part they did an amazing job with. However, I feel like the bottom part could have been a little more hollowed out. They probably didn't do this because it is a plush. So that is totally understandable. But I feel like they could have like gone a little deeper, maybe not stuffed as put as much stuffing in there or something. There's probably some way they could have done it, but it's it's not that big of a deal. Going from there, there are two last things to mention. One of the those being the fact that when he's in his dry Bowser form, for some reason, and I think this is just, you know, a color palette, just cool guy change, but the lava has dyed the metal. Oh, you know what? It's probably that it's so red hot and the magic just kept it in that red hot state that you get these super hot bands. You know, I'm touching this and like, ah. you know, that, that hurts, dude. That hurts a lot. 
Like, my finger is burning. But yeah. yeah, so you have the red bands on his, uh, on his arm, which his arm actually looks pretty nifty. You know, you've got that, that whole, like, palm hand thing. And you've got the bone here. So you've got the, the red bands, and these are actually a very soft material, which is uh, fairly impressive for something that's supposed to be red hot lava. But that's, that, is my, that is my theory. So you've got those on both arms, and they're a very, very good red. Really love that choice of red. And then, of course, you also have the collar, which I never really notice on Dry Bowser, just because, like, for Bowser, his jaw is so pronounced that, like, it's just not as easy to notice. And I think his, uh, his spikes are actually more shallow on his cuffs and on here. So the lava could have very easily, you know, dulled those. It's, it's very possible. It's feasible. And the last thing is actually one of the coolest parts of this plush and why I like it over the bootleg. It's because this plush actually has the rib cage type of texture that Dry Bowser has. Now... I'm not going to get super nitpicky on this because you can only be so realistic with a character like Dry Bowser. However, I feel like they did an extremely good job on this because they didn't have to really go into this detail, but they pronounced the bone parts and they made they made it like kind of like a speed bump type of thing. And then they put this black line right in here to show that it's a hollowed out part of Dry Bowser. And that's super cool. It's also different than the bone connections, which aren't nearly as dark. So it's super easy to tell. This goes all the way from the front, from the top where the collar is, all the way down to his unmentionables. But yeah, that, that is a super cool detail that they put on him. And uh, I'm, I'm very stoked they did that. So all in all... Dry Bowser is a super awesome plush. Is it worth the $40? I'd say yes. However, I am concerned about certain things, like why are the teeth crooked? Why is it that the left foot isn't stuffed that well? Do I have an unofficial plush? I would hope not. Probably not, because this does look like the official plush, but it's very possible that they just couldn't get it perfect and you know what that's fine plush are gonna have imperfections and you know that's that's okay another imperfection that i did notice during this is that on his back it might be a little hard to see but there are a few bits of felt that are just kind of scraped off and show a whiter thing honestly while this should be a flaw and should make me kind of upset I, I actually don't mind it, considering the fact that he's supposed to be super worn and torn, so it gives an aged feeling. It gives that feeling of, I've been through a lot. Oh, and I didn't notice, he actually has uh, claws on his hands, too, which is the same thing as the teeth, and his thumb one here is actually, like, very indented into his thumb. That's really strange. But, like, on the other hand, you can see it's fine. So, I don't know if Sine is just getting um, a little bit run down on this kind of stuff, or Little Buddy, but it's hard to say that because even though quality control might be a little shaky, you gotta admit, this is a really cool plush, and this has a lot of detail, and is something that I never expected them to do. The fact that I have this in my hands right now is insane to me, and it's super awesome. Now, I do believe they did a Metal Mario plush with this, which was kind of just a metal variant, and I believe both of these were originally only released in Japan, so if you are able to get one, then more power to ya. Personally, I bought mine off of Amazon uh, for $40. I could have gotten it off of PlayAsia, but it was cheaper on Amazon. So, let me know. If this is an unofficial thing, please let me know. I think it is official because we also have the tag, you know, the official tag, and it does say it's designed and manufactured by Sine. I don't think there's really any bootlegs for this guy on the bootleg of Dry Bowser that is out there. 
is super different and also has a King Koopa variant, so, you know, there's that. So, while I wasn't able to drop Bowser into lava or go up endless stairs, I still hope that you guys enjoyed this video and had a great time as well as, you know, enjoyed seeing the plush. It works out that I'm doing this as well because, well, I might try to edit this for Halloween in October, maybe a little later. Who knows? But anyway, though, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Me and Dry Bowser, I'm going to start that uh, that biker gang and have a great time. We're gonna we're gonna drive up to like a a drive through or something, and we're we're just gonna be super polite to people. It's gonna be great. <laughs> anyway, though, guys, it's time to storm the castle.